You plonker, Rodney. Hi, welcome back to the garage conversion. Today we're going to make a start on getting the stud walls up, ready for the bathroom, ready for insulating the, these walls and hopefully a little bit more of a structure to the room so stick around see how we get on. First things first, I guess, really want to see if this wall here is parallel to our house wall, which is on the other side. Uh, so it's the first time I get to use my gadget that uh, my parents-in-law bought me for Christmas, which is a distance finder, a laser measure. So it's a bit easier than me trying to do it with a tape. Let's hope it's got battery. Good, so I'm just basically going off the stud work across to the plaster on the other wall. 2925 for that side, and over here, 2933. Quite handily, it actually says the two distances there, so we're not a million miles out. What's that, eight mil? So I think I'm just gonna go off this wall uh, to start with. That's in place. I've still gotta stud off that wall slightly to neaten things up and to run cables in. So I'm gonna just square off my lines. Basically I wanna draw the floor plan out with a Sharpie on the floor so I can kind of get a feel for it. So I'm not sure how you guys uh, figure out floor plans and spaces. Um, some people are very much able to just look at something on SketchUp or on paper and, uh, and work from it in that way. But still there's nothing quite like getting it actually in place, whether that's cardboard, boxes or um, bits of wood like I've got here just to get a feel for the room. What I want to do is cut the corner on the room so it doesn't kind of have, we don't have a jutting edge uh, as we put this partition up. It'll flow round a bit easier but I've also gone one step further and actually just plonked in the, the shower tray there and the pan just to get a feel for it. There's a few things as far as distances as far as the, uh, the sink or the shower, they both need to be outside zone two, which is 600 mil um, from the electric supply of the boiler. This will all be completely concealed in a cupboard, but um, I still want to keep that 600 mil rule, which we're fine on. I'm also going to have a bit of a partition there, but we'll come back to that. So I'm happy with what I've got here, which is 1.2 meters out, 1.2 meters out the other side, and then come across at 45. Then I just need to decide whether I want my door on the 45 section, in which case it would either be hinging out, which I don't really want, or if it hinged in, for example, it wouldn't be anywhere near this long, um, but it would probably need to open in towards the shower. We'd have to have a stop there. So again, that's not ideal. So there is the option to put the, the door on this side. Uh, so it's a bit of a walk round if you're coming up from that way, but equally not too much of an issue because we could have a towel radiator on this section. Slide this out of the way. I've made a mark here. Dust. Sharpies and dust don't really get on do they? So it's all butt up against there. I'm expecting Jason our plumber to come in and save the day any minute now done my first fix under the floor. I should have used him for that, but he's just flat out with lots of other work. Um, so I decided to go ahead with that, but when it comes to the heating pipes and also connecting up the supplies to the underfloor heating and the controls and the, the valves, he's gonna come in and sort that. I mean, if we really wanted to design this nicely, we could do a curved wall there, couldn't we? 
do we want to do a curved wall? The only thing is you wouldn't be able to put a tower radiator on the inside of it. Nor could it be where a door goes, so we can't. That'd be a fun one for the future, though. Unless you're tiling it. Oh, then you can get mosaic-type tiles, can't you, on a match? So we'll draw it all out. So scale, but I'm still struggling to work out if this is going to flow right with the door. I just don't like the idea of an outward opening door to get into the bathroom. This is so the sort of thing Dad would do. <laughs> I'm turning into my father. Right. This inward opening would be pivoting there. Now I think that's not a bad shout. Swing in or out. I guess we can actually decide if the door comes in or out after the fact. We just need to know where to put the lining. You go in, tower radiator on the left, basin straight in front of you, toilet there, extractor. Yeah. Good, so our layout's fine. So what I'm gonna do is come across on a straight, turn our 45 degree corner, which is, the cuts will be 22 and a half degrees. to a donut for this afternoon's efforts and I feel like a cheated man look at that for a jam donut I mean this not a good ratio now before I get bombarded with comments of why aren't you just screwing it together one I've run out of screws but also because we've got this we may as well use it um, I know there's the whole nail versus screw argument but structurally nails are probably got the edge anyway and you know it's fun to use different things uh, we'll probably end up screwing some of it when I fix it into the floor and the ceiling I'll probably do that but also when it's, the timbers are slightly twisted or bowed and you've got to pull them in then I find the screws work better for that but this is um, it's a good tool for the job for these sort of things unlike my jam donut so when you're in a tighter situation like this well while it is nice to be building a stud wall on a nice flat floor for once we're a bit tight. Getting a screwdriver, an impact driver in it would be a lot easier. So, it's uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's it. Right, now we've got our, our wall made up. It's gonna swing up, but I also need to drill our holes for our pipes that come up through the floor. You're just going to do one screw it in the top, one in the bottom, till I've got the other two walls, and then we can just fine tune it. I will actually put some noggings halfway up, but one thing I do want to do is just work out exactly what height I want my mixer bar for the shower to be, uh, so that it'll either be below or above that. Right, next wall, I've cut the same 22 and a half angles on, top and the bottom. I'm just using up some scraps here, but because our our ceiling is sloped. All of these studs are going to be slightly different. So I'm going to try something new, measure our studs out. So 
put those two there, they'll account for the, the top and bottom. And if I use our laser and sit it on top of those two, about halfway across where the stud will be, providing it's hitting the insulation. So that's two, one, nine, one. Two, one, seven, five. Two, one, five. Nine, two, one, four, five. So there are four studs, we're going to cut those. So I'm just going to check it. Right, second one's in. That's working a treat, really nice and snug. But we run out of wood. Right, mission complete. I picked up about 30 lengths. Such a nice day out there. I think spring, spring's finally here. But technique is worked a treat. running out of wood, it's all going to plan. We have decided, just came out, we had a bit of a walk through, Joe and I, we're gonna go for the door here. Just feels better. It'll just be a bit of a waste of a space if we come in on this side. So now we've ended up with our um, 22 and a half degree cuts. So I can literally, I'll plumb this one up, well plumb them both up and temporarily screw them in so I know that they're not going to move. Then we can just measure short edge to short edge, cut another piece with 22 and a half. Now this piece will have a stud either side of the door lining, but I will leave the timber on the bottom and then before we put the door lining in and when we're happy and it's all in, I'll probably then just cut out the bottom timber. So we'll have a little timber to step over for a few days. Bend it up nice and snug to the insulation. And although I kind of guessed that angle, it looks good enough from down here at least uh, to get that stud vertical. It's about there. And actually we can fine tune that by the time we cut our next piece. The, the angle won't lie, so we can pull that in time. Not that the might have really matters, it's not a flipping cabinet. Now, now something's very wrong there. I know why that is. It's because we're not the same distance from that wall to that wall as we are from that wall to that wall. You plonker, Rodney. It's not gonna be a 45. Oh, what a nincompoop. Right, so in an attempt to get ourselves out of that, I have uh, simply made an extra piece there, which will carry us on and allow our nice mitre to, to go in there. So it's, uh, it's just a little quirk. No one needs to know. Uh, so we need to put a, fix this in and we need to put an additional stud and I've got the same piece to match the top. Now we should be able to get that satisfying fit that we were all hoping for. Good. We should probably just check this one's plumb. We still need to tape up and finish our ceiling, but we can do that afterwards. That is uh, not exactly what we want to see, is it? Why is that not? Ah, ha ha, ha ha. The roof's sloped, isn't it? That makes things a little bit more tricky because it's now a compound mitre angle because we're going up as well as across. Which is why this piece here 
everything's really plumb, all the studs, and I was just trying to work out why it's not the same. But of course, because we're going up, it's slightly longer. I'm just gonna make that slightly longer. Screw that in, we'll fine tune that in a minute. What I wanna do now is I'm just gonna throw the laser, I'll do it from the bottom, but to get a reading for each stud. That's not right. Maybe that wasn't a full length stud that I just cut. Two, one, four, one. Let's try it again. Take two. What? I don't believe it. My head's hurting. What's going on? Blaming this. I'm so confused. Nope, it is right. User error. Let's try again. Lucky we need lots of short studs the other side. Come on, baby. Well, as the old saying goes, sixth time lucky. That, after all that, that's kind of what I was going for. Uh, it's yet to be all fixed together. So on the outside here, you could make a little kind of uh, set of kite size blocks, but I think what I'm gonna do is rip down a, a, an extra timber to slot in there. Let's finish it off with some noggings all the way around. Remember, this is gonna be tiled, certainly the other one will be. So we want it really nice and stiff. Right, last piece of today's jigsaw. Get them all leveled up. And that, we're done. Pretty successful afternoon. Three hours I think we were in that. So I think these angles will really nicely tighten up once I cut that fillet strip to go in there. And whilst I was having a little coffee, just now, I did a Google on that, a YouTube, and um, in amongst the YouTubes was a, a chap who was doing exactly this done the same as what I've done here, but he, the way he cut that, although he did it on a circular saw and I'll probably do it on the table saw, I'm sure I'll feature it in the next video, but if you imagine cutting a 45 degree triangle off the end there, like that, and then what you do is you move this section up to here, and it basically ends up giving you a kite shape. It will give us the exact kite that we need to fill it that and bring us out to a point exactly what we want for the plasterboard. But that will be for a future video. A passing query, as I get close to finishing up now, is how do you do your noggings? Because these ones up here you can see all in line, which is perfect for when you come to board out because your join between the boards is the same all the way along. Everything gets supported. However, when you stagger them, which is what I did on the roof, doesn't matter for the roof, and for the joists in the floor it's fine. But when you stagger them on a wall, like I've done on this course, don't know why I did them differently, yes, you're better for your fixings because you can get in from both sides for your screws or nails, but what happens is, like here, this section of the joint is unsupported. Now, in the whole theory of things, especially if it's skimmed like it is the other side, it's scrimmed and skimmed, it's absolutely fine, but that is not as good as this is for the board. So I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way, and I've seen it done both ways. I tend to go that way now, just because it seems better when it comes to fitting the plasterboard, and you can still get the fittings, in, the fixings in, your, your nailing or screwing on an angle. Um, but anyway, stick your comments down below. How do you do it? Why do you do it that way? and which one is wrong or which one is right. There we go, we're wrapping it up now. Got a nice 45 degree, I hope that helps if anyone's looking at doing a wall like this or a doorway like this. And when it comes down to it, we've, we've done this in a couple of places in the house. It really makes a difference. If you're partitioning off a room 
and you're making a cubicle of some sort, if you take the corner like this, it just softens the whole feel of it, the flow. You know, you imagine me walking down this, it really would feel like a corridor, and I'd end up with this jutting out corner, where I've just taken it off, just, you know, I'm gonna be able to come in, see the big window there, and it really opens it up. So, I hope that was uh, enjoyable to watch. It was quite an enjoyable build to do. I'm glad that plumbing fiasco's over. Um, and what it means is now Jason, our plumber, was busy in the end and he couldn't get over in time. But now the stud work is up, it means that our radiator on this side, our towel radiator here, and our radiator in the other room, which will be the other side of this wall, I don't have to get him back twice. He can just come in. All he was coming in to do today was connect up the kitchen underfloor heating but now he can come in run those three radiators and I'm planning to do a dedicated thermostat and valve for this area so it's kind of zoned from the house so if we're not using it we can uh, it, it's not going to come on all the time with the rest of the ground floor of the house there we go let me know what you think next up we'll be boarding out getting the electrician in to do all the wiring in this end and then we'll start chopping out and getting that window fitted. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.